Wa alaikum salam. Now welcome uh, to all of you again our uh, course BGE five to seven introductory ecological chemistry. And today is fourteenth uh, uh, February. So uh, all the best wishes and love to all of you all human being and also the first falgun right so shubho vasanto uh, we sh today we shall discuss on uh, some interesting topic uh, the basic uh, chemistry of the chemical ecology. I'm going to show you the slide first and then how are the slide visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Is the slide moving? Yes, sir. Fine. Then, do you, uh, are you familiar to this uh, structure? Chemical structure, have you heard about oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine? Yes, sir, I've yes, heard sir. about these okay. chemicals. Uh, there are uh, three very important metabolites. The first one, oxytocin, a peptide, neurostimulating peptide. The other two, serotonin, uh, amine, and dopamine. These three chemicals are very critical and important for social bonding, cognition, mood, anxiety, or psychosis, and also chemical pleasure. So some people call them uh, lab hormones and in human and the role of these physiologically active neuromodulating compounds are very complex and the level of these hormones uh, are very critical for human energy mood anxiety love or uh, anything else. Um, a large number of research have been carried out uh, on these three compounds. For example, serotonin, serotonin and dopamine, oxytocin, some people call them love hormone and uh, it, these molecules significantly uh, regulate human mood, energy, even cognition, for example, concentration for learning new things or like that. And it has been found that dopamine and ser serotonin level significantly increase if you are in a pleasure mode or if you are listening a very nice, you know, mind blowing song, or if you are celebrating something, if you receive an award, so the level of dopamine and serotonin go up. But if you are in depression, somehow if you are in sad mood, the level go down. And there is a critical limit if serotonin and dopamine level goes below that critical limit, then people 
even can commit suicide. They feel that life is meaningless or like that. So what we need to do, we need to keep their level up and do fun in your work or in your life and enjoy what you uh, are doing, whatever. So make your life pleasurable, make friendship, help people. All these things would help you to push these uh, three hormones. So today I think very relevant and they are powerful, you know, uh, physiologically active compounds in human. And other organisms, uh, some other organisms also produces, uh, for example, dopamine, uh, like compounds or serotonin. But the role of uh, these compounds in other organisms are not fully understood. Today we shall discuss on secondary metabolites. Before that, you must understand what is metabolism. I guess in your biochemistry course, you learn what uh, is metabolism. This term uh, comes from a Greek word metabolism, means outflow. Metabolism is the set of chemical reactions that happen in living organisms to maintain life. So in all living organisms, in our cells, metabolisms are always going on. Metabolism also help us to get the energy from the, you know, food. For example, uh, I'm talking now and to talk, I need uh, ATP, energy, and the ATP, you know, how ATP is generated from different uh, carbohydrates we are taking uh, as energy source, as food. So there are several metabolic pathways. Metabolism can be divided into two groups. One is catabolism, which is the breakdown of organic matter. For example, harvest energy in cellular respiration. For example, glycolysis, uh, TCA cycle. In that, uh, you know, metabolic pathway, in those metabolic pathway, breakdown of organic matter results energy and energy currency is ATP. The smallest currency unit is ATP. But there are some NADH or FADH or like that. There are bigger currency also. A another group is anabolism. Anabolism uses energy to construct components of cells such as protein, nucleic acids. That means synthesis of larger molecule, which is directly related to the growth of the uh, organism. So uh, it use energy for uh, synthesis of protein, nucleic acid, for example, DNA, RNA, or bigger molecule. Scientist Santorio, Santorio in 1614, in his book, Arcede, Statica Medicina published experimental result in human metabolism. So metabolism uh, has been uh, a subject for academic study since uh, 16th century. Now question is secondary metabolites. If uh, I ask you secondary metabolites, naturally there is a question, what are primary metabolites? Primary metabolites are chemical compounds, biochemical compounds, 
that are involved in growth, development, and reproduction of an organism. For example, amino acid, for example, protein, for example, lipid, they are directly involved in growth and development of an organism. Now question is, what are secondary metabolites? Secondary metabolites are organic compounds, obviously, that are not directly involved in normal growth, development, and reproduction of an organism. Some people uh, in the early ages thought that secondary metabolites are waste product of the metabolic pathway. They didn't understand at that time uh, whether they have any meaning or not because they didn't find their involvement in a direct involvement in growth development and the production of the producing organism. But later on, scientists discovered secondary, uh, uh, discovered their meaning and termed them secondary metabolites. As I mentioned, primary metabolites is a kind of metabolite that is directly involved in normal growth, development, and reproduction. And Question is, what are metabolites? Metabolites are intermediates and products of metabolism. For example, glycolysis, there are several steps. So every step there is a product and you can call them metabolite. Uh, metabolism, uh, already I told you, is the set of chemical reactions that happens in li living organisms to maintain life. So we shall study the secondary metabolites. First, focus on the plant secondary metabolites because plant produces diverse array of secondary metabolites. So secondary metabolites are derived from primary metabolites, as I mentioned. Here you can see uh, the simplified pathway of secondary metabolites purple color or uh, you know background uh, you can see different kinds of secondary metabolites for example alkaloids are a group of secondary metabolites they are produced from aliphatic amino acid or aromatic amino acids uh, similarly terpenoids they are produced from the product of uh, acid, uh, you know, mevalonic acid or melonyl uh, coenzyme, they are a product of, you know, TCA cycle or like that. Similarly, uh, flavonoidal compounds, they are also uh, produced from arom aromatic amino acids, hydroxybenzoic acids or like that. So in, in all cases, uh, the secondary metabolites are biosynthesized from the primary metabolites. Uh, this is the fundamental uh, story uh, from where secondary metabolites are derived. The simple answer is secondary metabolites are derived from uh, primary metabolites. There are several groups of secondary metabolites in plants. For example, terpenes, a large group of secondary metabolites are terpenes. Uh, more than 29,000 uh, terpenes have been uh, discovered. And they are mostly derived from the C5 precursor uh, isopentenyl diphosphate. I shall show you iso IPP. IPP in metabolic pathway in biochemistry, possibly you have studied. The second uh, class of or group of secondary metabolites are alkaloids. Uh, more than, you know, 12,000, not 12,000, maybe now more than 15,000 alkaloids have been discovered. And they are derived from amino acids. The third group uh, is phenolic compounds. Uh, they are also 
very large group and they are biosynthesized in the cell using shikimic acid pathway or shikimate or malonate or acetate pathway. There are other groups, uh, a, a classification of secondary metabolites, for example, nitrogen containing. If we classify them, whether the molecule contains nitrogen or not, then we can say nitrogen containing group. Alkaloids, they must contain nitrogen, heteroatom. Non-protein amino acids, you know, we have uh, in the cell only 20 amino acids involved in synthesis of protein and they are called essential amino acids. But there are hundreds of amino acids are biosynthesized in the cell. They are called secondary metabolite, non-protein amino acids. They are not involved in synthesis of, uh, you know, protein. Amines, different of amines, cyanogenic glycosides. Glycosides means those compounds contain one or more uh, molecule of glucose. Glucosinolates, another class of uh, compounds, but all these, you know, five uh, groups of compounds, they contain at least one uh, uh, nitrogen atom in their structure. Without nitrogen, terpenoids, yes. Terpenoids, I told you, the uh, largest group of secondary metabolites. And they are monoterpenoids, sesquiterpenoids, diterpenoids, triterpenoids, steroids, saponins. There are uh, several classes of terpenoids. And phenolics, phenolics are also free from the nitrogen uh, atom in the structure, flavonoids, polyacetylenes, polyketides, phenylpropanoids. So there are several classes uh, in the uh, phenolics also. So question is, in case of uh, plant or other organisms, those produce the secondary metabolites, why are they keep them? Uh, and where they are produced uh, in the cell, mostly in the cytosol, hydrophilic, com uh, hydrophilic compounds are mo uh, mostly remain in the cytosol of the cell. And in plant, chloroplast uh, contains alkaloids, for example, caffeine. Caffeine is a secondary metabolite, neurostimulating compound uh, present in the coffee we drink. And the terpenoids, like monoterpenoids, they are found in chloroplast. Uh, mitochondria contains some amines, alkaloids. And in the cell vesicles, uh, different alkaloids like protobarberins. Endoplasmic reticulum, another organelle of the cell, contains hydroxylation steps, uh, that means hydroxylated product or lipophilic compounds, lipophilic and hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means, philic means affinity. Hydro means water. That means the compounds love water, they are hydrophilic. And lipophilic means compound love uh, fat or oil like that. So, uh, they are lipophilic and they are also hydrophobic. So hydrophobic and lipophilic are almost similar. Secondary metabolites sequestration to uh, a location with a solid barrier and not with a biomembrane. Uh, here you can see uh, the A, figure A, some ball like structure. Uh, these are uh, thyme glandular type trichomes. Thyme leaf contains uh, scanning electron microscope. You can see this structure. And mint, you know, mint is very familiar, uh, familiar to you. Mint leaves contain uh, this type of bomb-like, you know, dome-shaped structure on the surface. And they are full of terpenoids. So when you touch them, they burst. 
why they are chemical weapons to ward off the herbivore, but mint, uh, strong, uh, you know, aroma, uh, people love. In case of lemon leaves, you know, lemon leaves, if you crush, then you can get strong aroma. And uh, they have the uh, secretory cavity in the cell. And pine resin duct, pine plant, excrete resin, they are, they are the ducts. So uh, plant also store uh, the secondary metabolites in different forms and uh, for the different purposes. We shall discuss the purpose of producing secondary metabolites. Here, the function of secondary metabolites. Yes? Sir, could you describe that term uh, sequestration? Yes, sequestration means uh, the, you know, uh, deposition uh, or uh, a store or uh, site for uh, uh, storing or uh, deploying the, the particular uh, secondary metabolite uh, in the organism because organism produce in the uh, cell a certain location of the cell through, biochem uh, through biochemical process. But those molecules are encased in a way, some of them are even toxic for the uh, producing cell, for example, cytotoxic compound. In that case, uh, they encase them uh, so that it cannot harm their own cell, but uh, uh, beneficial or, or, or uh, associated with the fitness of the producer. For example, you can see in the mint leaves, uh, outside the leaf, they store this compound, uh, mint, uh, glandular trichomes, they are called trichomes. Trichomes means dome-shaped structure um, filled uh, with uh, particular secondary metabolite. Uh, in case of thyme, uh, glandular trichomes also like that. Trichome can be glandular or even uh, other shape. And uh, they are basically uh, chemical store uh, for the defense purposes. Uh, in the le lemon leaf, you can see there is a specific cavity where uh, the aromatic compounds, volatile compounds, terpenoid compounds are deposited. So when insect bite or any other herbivore attack the lemon leaf, they are exposed to these uh, toxic compounds. Uh, function of secondary metabolites, as I told you, uh, let me give you uh, the function in plants because plants uh, produce uh, produce diverse array of secondary metabolites. As I mentioned, alkaloids, terpenoids, or phenolic compounds, they are structurally incredibly diverse. Now question is why plant produces uh, diverse uh, classes of secondary metabolites? Scientists, uh, you know, summarized uh, their function uh, based on the known knowledge. For example, plant secondary metabolites, they remain sometimes, uh, in most cases, mixtures and uh, variation in time. Uh, I mentioned in my previous class, time, space, development stage and environment. That means at the st seedling stage, some compounds are dominant, but at the ripening stage, other compounds are dominant. That means uh, depending on the, uh, uh, and even in winter or in uh, other seasons, spring, uh, lots of, you know, uh, environmental factors, uh, growth stages, uh, they regulate which uh, compounds should be synthesized in how higher quantity and which in the lower quantity. So what are the main functions, known functions of these molecules uh, uh, for the plant. Uh, one is UV protection. Hundreds of molecules have been discovered from plant. They are uh, UV uh, protecting. That means uh, plants are sitting that they cannot move away uh, from the sunlight. We can use 
uh, you know, different protection, sunglass or uh, umbrella or many others to protect us from uh, the UV because sunlight contains the UV and UV uh, also damaging for the cell. So uh, plant produces uh, some uh, compounds that protect themselves from the UV damage. Other compounds uh, can be classified into two groups, defense. For the defense plant uh, use, plant has uh, lots of enemies because all the living organisms, they are directly or indirectly depend on plants for getting the energy. So they need lots of defense compounds. For example, they have some compounds that defend uh, the insect, vertebrates, and other herbivores. And some of them are repellent compounds. That means repel the uh, herbivore. Some are toxic, uh, deterrents, bad tests are uh, toxic or like that. Uh, they also use uh, compounds to defend themselves from the attacks uh, of microbes because bacteria, fungi, viruses, they are also enemies of the plant. So how they do? Uh, the secondary metabolites can inhibit the growth or reproduction or even membrane active or other uh, kinds of toxicity they show. And defense uh, also uh, compounds are being used uh, to compete with other plants. Plants in the natural ecosystem, uh, they compete uh, with uh, another plant for getting the nutrient and space. For example, our crop plant always, uh, you know, uh, fight with the weeds. Uh, so weed uh, and uh, crop plants, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, use chemical weapons. Uh, to stop germination of others or grow, uh, growth of other plants uh, and uh, lots of uh, mechanisms are there. And this type of uh, you know, competition uh, and defense is called allelopathy. Allelopathy, some allelopathic compounds uh, plant use to, uh, uh, you know, uh, out uh, uh, compete with uh, the other plants. And plants also use some uh, secondary metabolites for attraction of other organisms. For example, pollinators, pollinating insects or pollinators, seed dispersing animals, uh, seed dispersing animals, plant, you know, fruits, uh, plant fruits uh, when ripen, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, produce lots of volatile compound and color uh, attractive uh, 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 co coloring compounds and they attract the animals for dispersing the seed. And root nodule bacteria, most interesting, legum, rhizobium, sim the symbiosis. Uh, plant produces secondary metabolite like flavonoid uh, to uh, attract the right rhizobium um, strain on their root for the nodulation and fix the nitrogen and help them. And induced volatile attractant. Induced volatile attractant, they use different volatile compounds to attract the, uh, you see, predator. Uh, those are enemy of the insect. So enemy's enemy is friend, you know, uh, enemy's enemy is friend. So plant recruit, uh, uh, they are enemy's enemy uh, 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 and use the volatile uh, 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 for, to attract the predatory organisms. So there are lots of uh, other mechanisms. Plants even use volatile compounds to talk uh, uh, with each other. For example, if one plant is attacked by an insect, immediately plant uh, excrete volatile substances so that uh, you know, neighboring plants or plants, even in the distance, they can sense uh, that a particular insect is uh, uh, now on a member of this community. So other plants can 
uh, take action uh, to synthesize the right toxic compounds to defend themselves from the uh, new enemy. So there are lots of examples of secondary metabolites. For example, visu visual uh, pollinator attractant in the flower routine. And uh, uh, another one is rutenone, insect feeding deterrent. Uh, uh, and olfactory pollinator attractant, linalol. Uh, barberin is defense toxin uh, and uh, DIMBUA beta uh, 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 simple phenolic compound uh, used as defense toxin and uh, uh, brasilexin anti-fungal toxin. So these are some uh, simple examples. There are thousands of uh, bioactive compounds have been discovered from different plants. So production of secondary metabolites for defense against herbivores and pathogens is not necessarily constitutive. This is very important. Uh, plants not always, you know, possesses uh, uh, constitutively uh, the defense co uh, compounds against all herbivores and pathogens. Sometimes uh, it, uh, the, uh, these compounds are synthesized due to the induction or the presence of the, uh, you know, uh, the enemy. Uh, so wounding and infection trigger induced accumulation of secondary metabolites or a, a present metabolite which are not enough. Uh, after attack, plants are induced to synthesize more powerful toxin uh, or more powerful defense uh, molecules. Uh, so uh, wounding and infection uh, by the herbivore or microbes uh, plant produce diverse molecules, especially when uh, plants are induced to synthesize a new molecule, uh, DNOVU. Uh, DNOVU means uh, internally. Uh, then uh, these compounds are generally known and known as phytoallergens. Phytoallergens. So phytoallergens are newly synthesized compounds to tackle uh, the uh, attack of, by the herbivore and microbes. Uh, but there are not only um, herbivore and microbes, even abiotic stress also induce uh, synthesis of uh, some of the you know, molecules, uh, we can call them phytoallergen. And uh, uh, when plants are induced uh, uh, by the attack of uh, herbivores or microorganisms, uh, sometimes they, uh, they uh, uh, you know, produce higher uh, quantity of uh, prefabricated defense chemicals and increase the existing defense compounds. So there are several strategies depending on the uh, uh, situation. One of the classical example of constitutive defense uh, is mustard oil bomb. And now it is a season if you visit the mustard uh, field you can uh, sense the presence of glucosinolate. Uh, glucosinolates are, <coughs> sorry, glucosinolates are, uh, you know, mustard oil bomb. And uh, there is an enzyme, myrosinase. Uh, so myrosinase enzyme, it is inactive. And glucosinolate is a cocktail-like uh, big molecules, but uh, when, uh, plants are attacked by uh, the herbivores, for example, insects, then immediately myrosinase become activated. That means when damage is occurs, then myrosinase activated, uh, activated and uh, result isothiocyanates, very toxic compound, nitriles and elemental sulfur, thiocyanates, oxaloledin thiones, and epithionitriles, lots of chemical weapons uh, uh, from the you know bomb blast uh, taken place. So if you crash a mustard leaf or stem, you can get strong uh, sulfur and other uh, uh, order uh, or, uh, order of uh, these compounds uh, because uh, 
uh, myrosinase then activate and produce the toxin. And some of the thiocyanates, you know, very uh, uh, toxic compounds. This is an interesting compound, uh, a necklace like, you know, uh, ring you can see. It is a cross section of an oat root. And scientists discovered that an oat root to protect itself from the uh, soil, fungi, and other microorganisms, uh, they uh, synthesize a particular compounds and deposited in one layer of cell, like our house or a uh, temple. You can see there is a fencing system. So it is not uh, uh, depositing in uh, multi layers, only single layers, so that uh, when uh, the invader uh, uh, attempt to invade the root tissue, uh, then they will face this toxin. And scientists discovered this uh, very classical and interesting defense mechanism uh, by using chromatography. And this is the compound, Avenacin A1. This compound is toxic for the fungi and soil bone juice spurring uh, phytopathogens. Uh, for uh, in case of juice spur, when attempt uh, to the Avena sativa root, this compound. Uh, cause lysis of the cell. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, interesting uh, phenomena and the British scientist discovered this, uh, you know, uh, she used some uh, fluorescence uh, compound tag with the evanescin to visualize how smartly plant use defense compound uh, to protect themselves from the uh, rhizosphere microorganisms. Uh, interestingly, uh, later I shall discuss, this compound is uh, toxic for the fungi, but fungi, as I mentioned, uh, who evolutionary arm race, they develop uh, some enzyme. So they use the enzyme to cut this glycosidic bond. Here you see the glucose. So if they cut this glucosidic bond by using an enzyme, then this compound is no more toxic. So this is the uh, you know, uh, evolutionary process when plant produce a toxin and the herbivore also uh, uh, take a counter defense and this race is continuous. And this is why plant uh, uh, has uh, you know, hundreds of uh, secondary metabolites. Uh, and this is an arm race. Uh, the name uh, terpenoids, I mentioned terpenoids are the largest group of secondary metabolites uh, derived from the fact that first members of the class were isolated from turpentine, the distillate from tree, pine tree. Pine tree distillate uh, was the first isolated uh, from the resin of pine tree, scientists discovered turpentine. And the name comes from uh, that first compound. And isoprenoid, since, since isoprene is the basic unit of uh, C5 building block, I told you uh, the terpenoidal compounds contains one or more C5 building block. That means uh, C5, C10, C15, like that, their structure. Here you can see isoprene, the smallest, uh, you know, terpene. And here, limonene. Limonene is a diterpene. That means two isoprene unit is here. Limonene, you can find uh, 10 carbon, but here, five carbon. So, Leopold uh, Rujica, uh, who got the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1910, uh, uh, she uh, discovered the isoprenoid and uh, this principal isoprene rule. And uh, it is derived biologically from isoprenoid with or without rearrangement. Uh, the terpenoids of plant origin, uh, they are uh, basically involved in various biological functions, flavor, fragrance, scent in the flowers or even the leaf, antibiotics, some of them are uh, toxic for the microorganisms, hormones, some of them are hormones, for example, plant hormones, gibberellic acid and 
uh, others they are isoprenoidal compound, uh, uh, terpenoidal compound. Membrane lipids, membrane lipids are terpenoidal compound. Insect attractants, insect antifidants mediate the electron transport chain, you know. The quinone, uh, quinone uh, 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 is uh, involved in electron transport chain, so terpenoids are also play a role there. This is the uh, simple uh, diagram of showing different uh, functions of uh, terpenoids in the above ground and below ground uh, part of the plant. In the above ground, they attract by uh, releasing different fragrance compound, volatile compound, uh, pollinator and others, and uh, even predators. Uh, and they also produce different repellents, antifidants, uh, uh, like that. And below ground, also similar, they use different non-volatile compounds to protect themselves from the uh, microorganisms or other insects or, uh, you know, nematodes. Uh, so uh, they use the defense compounds and some of them also uh, used to recruit the beneficial uh, microorganisms because in the rhizosphere, uh, 99 percent, uh, more than 99 percent organisms are beneficial. So they use the compound uh, to guide them to find the root. And actually, rhizosphere is the hotspot of microorganism because plant produces uh, uh, carbon containing uh, compounds through photosynthesis by fixing, you know, light energy and convert them into chemical energy. And those compounds are uh, essential for plants growth and development. But a large proportion of the photosynthetic, nearly 40%, they release uh, through the exude through the root. Why? Uh, to recruit different, to offer energy to the uh, microorganisms. And rhizosphere microorganisms, they are uh, very important for the plants. Plants cannot, uh, plants have no teeth, cannot eat any nutrient. Uh, they need uh, the nutrient cooked by the microorganisms. Plant can only take nutrient in the ionic form. So uh, conversion of the nutrient from organic and inorganic sources uh, 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 for uh, uh, having the ionic form, the microorganisms are the real players. So uh, this is a, a mutualistic relationship between plants and uh, uh, the uh, rhizosphere organisms. So this is all about today's uh, talk. Uh, you can ask some questions. Now it is turn, uh, your turn to ask some question. Um, sir, the product that are produced inside the cell, how they transfer from one, one place to another place in plant? You mean uh, the plant produces uh, secondary metabolites in certain cell, how they transport from one cell to another, right? Yes, sir. Yes. For example, uh, some of the compounds plant synthesize in the root. But uh, if uh, these uh, compounds are necessary to be utilized in the leaf, then they can transport through the you know, vascular system. And uh, xylem, phloem, uh, they are the uh, uh, vascular system in the uh, plant. Uh, which transport mostly water and carbohydrate, but also a secondary metabolites, long distance transport of molecules uh, from leaf to root or root to leaf uh, uh, in case of secondary metabolites are possible. And uh, they do uh, various ways, even cell to cell uh, transport system is also possible because they are small molecules. Now, plant has no vascular system uh, uh, like human or other mammals, that is blood circulatory system. But they have uh, two classical vascular system. One is called xylem, uh, which is mainly used to uptake uh, water uh, and nutrient in the ionic form uh, 
uh, uh, by the root and transport to the whole, uh, uh, you know, above ground uh, parts or whole uh, other cells. And the second one is flu uh, uh, phloem, uh, which is mainly used to transport uh, the carbohydrate biosynthesized in the or uh, uh, photosynthetic process in the uh, leaves and then transport to the uh, other organs of the plant. So uh, these are the classical, but there are some other complex mechanism of cell-to-cell -cell communication and transport of very small molecules. Any more question? Sir. Yes, Abrar. Sir, would the wax layer on plant leaf also be a secondary metabolite? The wax layers on plant leaves? Uh, they are uh, not secondary metabolites, but they are, you know, a very powerful defense system wax layers uh, uh, the, some of them are a complex compound uh, and they are a defense uh, uh, system for example uh, young leaves you can see they are very shiny and, and that contains the finest layer of a uh, wax layer and uh, interestingly uh, the mechanism of uh, wax layers how they are biosynthesized and commercial exploitation of wax layers are still uh, uh, an interesting subject for research because if we can use those uh, non-toxic wax layer uh, of, of, uh, we can uh, preserve the uh, or uh, limit the post harvest losses of the uh, our horticultural and other produces. Yes, wax layer uh, also protect uh, plants from, uh, uh, you know, uh, loss of uh, water uh, as well as protect the uh, uh, plants from the invasion of uh, microorganisms and others and keep uh, the plant clean. They are hydrophobic in nature. Uh, and uh, in the wax layer, there are some uh, compounds also secondary metabolites, mostly terpenoid. They are hydrophobic compounds. So very complex, not a plain single uh, you know, chemical compound, but uh, mostly lipid. Any more compound uh, 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 question or comment? Sir, can you please repeat the term cytotoxic compound? And sir, I have the confusion, sir. Is it an example of cytotoxic compound? Glandular trichome is not a compound. Glandular trichome is a, a you know, carrier of cytotoxic compound. So glandular tri trichome means a poisonous bottle or like that. So Cytotoxic compounds means the uh, compound which are uh, damaging to the uh, cell. Cell means uh, maybe a particular organelle in the cell. Some of them are uh, can bind with the mitochondria and stop the activity of mitochondria. Some of them uh, can damage the cell membrane can bind with the cell membrane. Uh, that means somehow uh, the compounds that are uh, inhibitory or uh, harmful to the cell are called cytotoxic compounds. So scientists are discovering cytotoxic compounds uh, uh, from the uh, nature uh, to kill the cancer cell. For example, if your compound is uh, uh, specific, really toxic to the specifically toxic to the cancer cell, but not the uh, healthy cell or normal cell. Then uh, that would be anti-cancer compound, and uh, this is also cytotoxic compound. But some of the compounds are broadly uh, 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 toxic to the uh, cell. That means any cell membrane 
they can damage or even can damage the DNA or like that. That are, you know, problematic, not so useful, but useful for uh, killing particular weed or some, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, forest or like that. But uh, uh, if it is specific, and if you know the specific function, then cytotoxic compound is important. Professor King Horn in USA, his lab master student discovered a, a compound, Texel, from a, a plant, your plant. And that compound can uh, stop the assembly and disassembly of uh, tubulin uh, in the cancer cell. So that uh, uh, discovery leads first year $5 billion business. <laughs> so you can imagine uh, the secondary metabolites uh, how powerful business potentials are there. Clear? So these compounds are harmful for its own cell? Can be. Uh, there are several uh, uh, compounds, plant uh, organisms synthesized, can be you know, harmful for their own cell. This is why they encase those compounds in particular, you know, vesicle or a particular uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, site of the cell. For example, uh, poison, uh, uh, when we use uh, insecticide to kill the insect, uh, but insecticide, uh, if human uh, uh, drinks insecticide, uh, they can uh, uh, commit suicide. That means toxic for human also, uh, even though we keep them in our house. Uh, uh, and we uh, put them in the bottle and, uh, you know, uh, kept tightly and in a, a place where children and others cannot touch. Like that way, cell also uh, use some toxic compounds for the enemy. But uh, if, uh, 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 you know, uh, they are not encased in a way so that uh, their cell organelles would be safe, uh, uh, this is why they uh, uh, put the uh, certain compounds outside uh, in a certain uh, encasing system. For example, butterflies. Butterflies, <coughs> sorry, deposit some cardiac glycosides uh, on the surface of their wing. Uh, and they are very toxic compounds. But they deposit in a way, transport in a way, so that those compounds cannot harm them. Any question? So I have a confusion. So it's about primary and secondary metabolite. So in the very former um, slide, you have shown it, like some secondary metabolites are being produced from secondary metabolites too. So then should we call it secondary metabolite or some other tertiary thing or not? All primary uh, secondary metabolites are derived from the primary metabolites, okay? The root is the primary metabolite. For example, I told you amino acid or the product of DCS cycle or some phenolic compound, uh, 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 how to say, uh, some uh, uh, product of different, uh, primary metabolic pathway. So uh, it is the fundamental, but uh, in the uh, production process, for example, from an amino acid, caffeine is uh, biosynthesized. So uh, it is not a single step, multi-step, uh, uh, multi-step process, lots of enzymes are there. So there is a, bio, a defined biosynthetic pathway. Uh, so what is important to know uh, all the secondary metabolites, they are originated or derived from the primary metabolites. And if you ask uh, whether secondary metabolites can be uh, uh, synthesized from another secondary metabolites, it is possible from one step to another structural change taken place. But the origin of all the secondary metabolites are the primary metabolites. Clear? Yes, sir. And so another question. So it's about UV protection. 
So, sir, secondary metabolites are used for UV protection. Then, uh, do they directly protecting from UV light, or they produce some kind of structure which will protect from UV light? Secondary metabolites that uh, they have the uh, different structure. They contain carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. Uh, oxygen, sulfur, or uh, other uh, element, and uh, that uh, 3D structure of uh, uh, of these compounds or 2D structure of the those compounds, uh, they can uh, you know uh, protect uh, the cell from the uh, UV. So UV may reflect from uh, them and cannot penetrate the structure, and this is why lots of Secondary metabolites uh, have been used in the UV Sanskrit. And uh, uh, from a Bangladeshi plant, uh, Lania corumendelica, one of uh, uh, locally named uh, Jiga or Kafila or like that, uh, has plant, wild plant. I discovered five UV uh, uh, protecting uh, compounds from the bark of uh, the Lania corumendelica. And uh, we published in uh, Phytochemistry, a very famous uh, journal. And then a uh, Canadian company, they used those compounds, they synthesized and used in the Sanskrit. So if you go uh, in the sunlight, like a beach uh, or other places, uh, people use sunscreen. So these compounds, they have the ability uh, to stop uh, uh, the penetration of the UV uh, light coming from uh, the sun. Clear? Any, any question? Sir, uh, I have a question. Uh, can you please describe the term uh, prefabricated compound? Yes, uh, if, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, in all uh, plants or even microorganisms, uh, there are two types of chemical weapons. One is constitutive. Constitutive means uh, always uh, uh, those weapons are present in the cells. That means uh, either they are attacked or not attack, uh, uh, they uh, uh, hold those molecules biosynthesize and uh, for the uh, defense. So they are called constitutive. But when uh, plants or other organisms attacked by the enemy, at that time, uh, they need to produce uh, uh, selective uh, compound or more toxic compound to tackle the enemy, just like war in a war, what people do, uh, the country bring other weapons uh, or uh, import other weapons from other country to tackle the enemy. So uh, some of the compounds uh, induced, that means induced to uh, uh, produce more uh, uh, chemical weapons, uh, some of them are new, newly biosynthesized genome in the cell uh, to tackle the enemy. Uh, that means they prepare uh, in the cell, uh, synthesize in the cell. They are called phytoallergens. But some of the, you know, previously present compound, not enough to tackle the enemy. In that case, uh, those molecules are, you know, uh, changed as, uh, are changed uh, in a uh, biosynthetic way of using particular enzyme to make more powerful uh, toxin. Uh, in that case, it is called pre-existing compound when uh, it is, you know, improved, improvised by using uh, uh, enzyme uh, to make a new, uh, newer product. They are called pre-fabricated. Already they are, but uh, uh, they are uh, upgraded. Uh, to make a powerful toxin. So these are really uh, in the chemical uh, communication and chemical ecology. Lots of interesting uh, things uh, you can understand uh, uh, 
what is going in our world, real world, and what is uh, uh, what are we cannot see directly in the naked eye, but happening in the uh, ecosystem. And we can learn lots of you know smart idea uh, from the uh, plant uh, uh, to use in our you know uh, real life world. Clear? Sir, so uh, prefabricated compounds are made from pre-existing compounds. Yes. And sir, clear. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Any other? Nas Kashfi? Sir, I have one. Yes. Sir. Please. Uh, in the cell, where are these secondary metabolite metabolites are stored? So where, where are they stored in the cell? Uh, there are many places I told you, hydrophilic compounds, they are stored in the cytosol. Uh, there are some compounds, they are stored in mitochondria. Uh, some of the compounds in endoplasmic reticulum, some of the compounds in the vacuole. So some of the compounds in the membrane, uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, uh, considering the uh, application of those compounds. And uh, some of the compounds are very toxic. They are uh, in the vesicle. So that vesicle means uh, some package. So uh, cannot harm the other organelle of the own cell like that. So there are uh, no fixed uh, location of depositing all the compounds together. Then it would be mess up and uh, would not be useful for the producer. Clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Naz, do you have any? Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, rhizobium selection and um, selection of rhizobium plant extract flavonoids. Sir, e, uh, sir, please repeat the term, sir. I can understand. Yes, <laughs> rhizobium legume sym symbiosis is well established phenomenon. Uh, in that case, leguminous plant recruit <laughs> particular, you know, rhizobium species uh, on their root and allow to allow uh, uh, habitat uh, accommodation uh, in uh, in the root and uh, uh, produce the nodule. So plant help uh, uh, to make the home for the particular uh, species of the rhizobium. And when you uh, sow a seed in the soil, uh, soil may contain the rhizobium, but how can uh, rhizobia uh, find the right host? In that case, plant root secret biosynthesize and secret particular flavonoidal signal. And uh, those signals, uh, create a gradient in the rhizosphere. So rhizobia, uh, the right rhizobia uh, species can sense they have the receptor uh, to perceive that signal. And then they show chemotaxis, move toward the root and find the host root and initiate their communication. And then they use some other signal the uh, rhizobium also uh, lipoketo oligosaccharide some uh, compounds they throw and then uh, root uh, can sense that yes rhizobium uh, uh, has arrived at the root tip and then root curve and make the uh, you know uh, the habitat we call nodule uh, and the rhizobium then make their population, a huge number and fix atmospheric nitrogen uh, and supply nitrogen to the most expensive you know, nutrient element is a nitrogen supply to the uh, plant because plant cannot take nitrogen from the air, but rhizobium can take. In return, rhizobium also get carbon from the uh, 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 plant because plant can easily synthesize 
uh, carbon containing compound through photosynthesis. So this uh, uh, is really amazing, but uh, initial communication is uh, happened by the use of chemical signal released from the plant root. Any question? Sir, I have another question. Sure. The nodule and the root knot, what is the main basic difference of this? Sir, mm -hmm. there... big, big difference. You should uh, go through it. Root knot, root knot is developed. Root knot is like a tumor developed by the agrobacterium uh, uh, tumefaciens and other uh, uh, bacteria or even nematode. Uh, so nematode uh, can, uh, you know, uh, plant responding to the nematode, uh, the deformation of the cell uh, result the root knot or agrobacterium tumefaciens can cause cancer-like uh, uh, you know, change they can transfer TI plasmid to the root and root a uh, gall can be developed. So root gall, root knot, and uh, nodule is different. Root gall is developed by bacteria, a group bacteria, and some other. Root knot is developed by the infection of a uh, nematode. And uh, uh, when uh, and uh, when nematode infect the uh, root and they uh, uh, you know uh, use uh, many uh, physiological uh, uh, triggers uh, and plant to protect themselves and limit the nematode they produce this not light -like structure it is a, a, a parasite parasite and host relationship and the phenomena is different and plants suffer from uh, uh, that uh, attack by the enemy. But in case of uh, nodule, plant welcomes the uh, friend and offer the habitat. So it is uh, not harmful for the plant growth and development, but beneficial. But in other two cases, gall and uh, not uh, harmful for the, uh, you know, uh, plants. Clear? And if you want to get more details on, uh, you know, legume rhizobium symbiosis, nematode, uh, host plant interactions, how not is developed, or a uh, gall forming uh, bacteria, uh, there are, you know, thousands of literature. You can find the finest pathway, how all the steps uh, result the you know, uh, the phenomena we can see in the naked eye. Good question. Any other? If no question, then I shall stop here today and have a good day.